Hi, I'm Lynn Bridgeford from the Aitha Bios Clinic, and today I want to talk to you about kinesiology. So this is the first video of a series we're going to be doing on applied kinesiology this month. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you the basics of muscle testing. I have a lovely assistant to help me to demonstrate what is muscle testing as simply as possible, how we do the muscle testing, what, what's involved, what can get in the way, and some of the basic things we can use it for. I started with kinesiology many, many years ago when I was very ill, and it's what really saved me to find out what I could eat and what I couldn't eat because my body gave the answers. So where I started was with a very simple system set up by John Thee called Touch for Health. This is for lay people. You learn some muscle testing, you learn it related to meridians, dealing with energy, emotions, foods. It's a comprehensive system that's very simple and very wonderful. From there, this was back in the 80s and everybody was interested in all this new stuff that had actually been put together in the 60s and 70s, first of all, by Dr. John Goodhart. And we all went to Holland to do a course that we came away with this many written notes by Dr. Sheldon Deal, a chiropractor from America, and we were completely transfixed after this course. We would come home and a bunch of us would get together once a month on a Sunday and try and work out how to understand the biocomputer, what we were testing, how could we stack things up related to the brain, the energy. It was very complicated but so exciting. So from there I did many different kind of studies in kinesiology. There were people like Richard Utt doing uh, applied physiology, Wayne Topping doing the eight meridians, eight extra meridians, Frank Mahoney doing a, a system called hypertonics which is very good for training muscles using the breath. Many of these people would come over from America, from Australia and teach us. So I did a lot of work with Dr. John Diamond. He worked with life energy and behavioral kinesiology. He is a psychiatrist and he found that by using muscle testing to key into the meridians and the emotions, he could get to the basis of somebody's problem in minutes rather than years of therapy. So he did a lot of this work with creativity and finding ways people can increase their energy. Fascinating work. Then I did three in one, which was people like Gordon Stokes looking at the three in one would be the body, the mind, the chemistry, and a lot of emotional work. Then I got involved in the International College of Applied Kinesiology. I did a 100 hours course, which is the entry point for people who have a medical qualification to join, and I did that with Dr. Tracy Gates. And the standards of the Applied Kinesiology are books by Dr. David Volta, that's head, neck and jaw, pain and dysfunction, stomatic and nathic system, which is all about the teeth, the basics of muscle testing. So those are the books, the main books, and this half-size one is a synopsis. So that's basically got everything that was done up until a certain point in applied kinesiology. So I did a lot of study with Chris Astle-Smith and he looks at uh, many, many things. He studies with Russians and a lot with the energy, a lot with functional biochemistry, so what's going on in the body. We will look at these in more detail later. And for today, what, what I'd like to look at is to just explain what is muscle testing. I have a, a lovely assistant to help today where we can demonstrate muscle testing and give an idea of what it can be used for. Thanks for joining us, Alyssa. So we're gonna give a little demonstration of what is muscle testing. So if you could put your hand up for me. See, I press and the automatic thing is to press back. That's basically a muscle test. If I press harder, you press harder and we both get a bit tired. Some people do a very gentle test. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. As an osteopath, I like something more physical and we do a strong test that engages the muscle. So it's not a strength test. If we were to put your hand and I could push through if I wanted. But if we're looking for a locking, so if you meet my pressure, it's what you did naturally, it locks. It's a difficult thing to see, you will feel it. You can fight a muscle test, but there's no point. We want to see a muscle needs to switch on and off. That one works, this one lets go, that one works, that one lets go, that's nature. So if a muscle isn't switching on, we're not supporting a joint. If it's not switching off, it's pulling on a joint. It's more than a tight muscle, it's really, it's been traumatized usually, and it's pulling. So we want to make sure that muscles switch on and off. 
So can I move your arms and legs around? Yeah. So what we do, we put an arm or a leg, or it might be the head as well, in a particular position. So we facilitate the muscle we want to test and we inhibit the rest. So let's take this arm here, turn it up, straight arm, and push up into my hand. So that locks, and again, push. Now there are many ways of switching a muscle off. This one I'm just going to go in the belly of the muscle and squeeze it and push up, and that switches off. So people who have it the first time, they might say, oh, you're pushing harder, but if you get used to that, it's easy to hold it. You don't have to make effort, or it's not. It doesn't have to be a dramatic fall down. So that muscle, the bicep muscle, is switching on and off, so we know that that one's working fine. Every muscle relates to an acupuncture meridian. So with the leg facing straight up, keep breathing. There's lots of things we have to watch for. If you hold your breath, <laughs> if you touch somewhere, it means something different. So I'm going to stabilize here and get you to push your leg up. And the switch off point is on the foot and push up. So that one switches on and off. So that's using a tonification point. If I use this one here and get you to push straight across to that shoulder. Okay, this is one on the foot and push. So there are many other ways. We could use a, a magnet. Some systems I use a magnet with so I don't have to keep switching on and off because the less tests I do for the more information, the better it is. If you want to find out where there's an issue, we could test through muscles and find out what's working, what's not. Or if we know there's an issue, is there anywhere in your body that you wouldn't mind us looking at where you have an issue? Um, I've got an issue with my jaw. Okay, the jaw's a good one. So we can test by her body doing things and this is why she'll do something I'll touch, why we have to be sure that we're not touching the body when we're testing. So we'll use this muscle, keep that nice and straight, and push into here. Okay, we're just checking that that muscle is okay. We're using this as what's called an indicator muscle, so it is a muscle related to a particular organ, but in this instance we know it's a muscle that works. We're going to see what happens when we do things with the body. So if you clench your teeth together and push, and open a little, push and open more and open all the way so it doesn't like opening all the way <laughs> so take your lower jaw forwards and push retract it back that's it I know it feels funny take your <laughs> lower jaw to the side and to this side okay so it doesn't like being wide open so that's usually to do with the muscles connecting in the jaw so I'm just going to put my finger push on the jaw and neither side is happy but you had more of an issue with one side mm -hmm. now this is done laying down if we're testing the jaw particularly it may look different sitting up or standing because of the pressures on the head so when we're checking things we don't live our life always laying down so we need to think about what the person does in their life as to how we test if we're testing a sports person we need to test them related to the position of their sport We'll start laying down, but if things aren't getting better enough, we'll put them in their posture that, that they're normally in. So that's touching the body to find out what's happening in a particular area. So if I was to touch somewhere else, let's just say I touch your hand here. You don't mind that at all because there's not a problem there, but where there's a problem, so it's a way of finding out. If I was to test a knee joint, and it wasn't happy, I could challenge it by doing, let's just, are oh, your knees okay? I've got an issue with the same. The right knee, yeah. okay. Can I demonstrate on the left knee so it's yeah, easy sure. to see? And push, okay. So I will challenge by moving the joint that way, and push, and moving it that way, and push, and moving it this way, and push, and moving it that way, <laughs> and push. And I'm going to twist it, and push, and twist it, and, oh, doesn't like twisting that way. <laughs> push, okay. So this knee doesn't like twisting that way. What we're doing is we're challenging, we're giving some input into the joint which feeds up to the brain and momentarily it says, I don't mind that, or, oh, and then that reflects all through the body. Doesn't mean you're going to walk around having pain with that because of what I've done, mm -hmm. but it's the way of testing the body. So I would look at certain muscles because of what I know relates to that. We perform the therapy, then we test again. The kinesiology isn't the therapy. 
Kinesiology is a diagnostic tool, so we're testing muscle responses. It's a bit like having a communication with the nervous system. So all the nerves come out of the spine, they feed muscles, they feed organs. So we know all these links, the neurology, anatomy, the physiology, and then we have to use our brains and the person's story and listen to their body and see what they want. They may want a nutrient. They may want a therapy. You can test what does this want? How can we test a baby? Well, we can't directly because they can't respond to muscle tests like we can. Or if somebody's in a coma, similarly, we can work on them with something called surrogate testing. Children need to be seven, round about seven, to be able to properly respond from their nervous system and with their muscles. So I have this little ball. If I touch the one, nothing happens. If I touch the other, it closes the circuit and makes a noise. A bit of an irritating noise, but it demonstrates and it lights up nicely. The kids love it. So if I touch that one and I invite you to touch that one there, nothing happens. Now if you touch my fingers, I've done that with a room of a hundred people. Now we have energy inside our bodies and I used to think it's kind of airy fairy stuff until somebody put a needle in an acupuncture point and it made me sit bolt upright and it reminded me of when I was a kid and I put my finger in the light socket. It's really strong. The energy in our body is super strong. So this connects a circuit. So that means if I was to get you to hold the baby, as long as I make sure who's touching who and what I'm giving to who, we can test the baby by testing your muscles. Or friend who's in a coma, we can do it the same way and find out what do we need to do for them, what therapy or what remedy or what doesn't suit them, what do we need to take out of their diet. Thank you so much for watching. That's just a very brief introduction of how we use kinesiology and what it can be used for. In the future videos, in the next few weeks, I'll be giving you much more detail about meridians and how we use the meridians and the muscle testing to find out what's going on in the body with the hormones, with the biochemistry and with the emotions. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really enjoying sharing my journey and my knowledge with you and I hope it's a help to you with your learning and your understanding. Please subscribe, like, write the, in the comments below and go across to my other channels. I have Instagram, Lynn Bridgeford. I have Facebook channels for the clinic, for the yoga and interact with me on all the channels and I would be happy to connect with you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you so much.